rise the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You know, if it's Rose and George, you should leave so much room for too. Yeah. Right. She never fit the years. Okay, uh, roll call, please. Are the microphones on? No. No. Testing. 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 Hello. Roll call, please. Mayor Cox. Here. Mrs. Passio. Here. Mr. Ranieri. Here. Mr. Robinson. No, he's not. Mr. Farrell. Here. Mrs. Kelly. Here. Mr. Ruth. Here. Mr. Wood. Here. Mr. Richard. Here. And Mr. Okay. Uh, public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the clerk in the following manner. One, posted on the bulletin board in the federal clerk's office on January 4th, 2017, and two, emailed to the retrospect and current post on January 4th, 2017. Uh, the first order of business this evening is the bond ordinance. Uh, this is the public portion. Uh, what am I saying here? This is, uh, this is a public hearing. Anyone wishing to speak about this bond ordinance, please come to the microphone, state your name and act. Right. Seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public portion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. I'll second it. Final reading and advertise according to law. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Kelly, to adopt on second and final reading and advertise according to law. Uh, roll call, please. And to those of you in the audience, this is the bond ordinance that helps pay for roads, buildings, signs, trucks, vehicles, vehicles, vehicles everything. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Fowler? Yes. Mr. Ramirez? Yes. Another type of anticipation. Oh, I forgot to take the right. So this will be advertised hopefully as early as this week. And then hopefully. Uh, we'll be able to get started on. Do you have any poll this. with uh, Susan? You do have poll with the high school. Uh, so as soon as we, this has been advertised, we can start our process of purchasing everything. So the process, again, was we determined what we wanted to spend the money on. We had to have these two hearings, and now we have to wait a little bit, and then we can start ordering everything and, and get it done. Okay, so now we have uh, some other order of business this evening. We have resolution 17-99. It was a resolution authorizing 2017 electronic tax sale. The tax collector of the borough of Miami, uh, was able to get this on very quickly this evening. Because she didn't want to miss her deadline. Uh, but just, and what this does is authorize us for a 12 month period. Does this include this year and next year? No. Oh. Only, only, for seven, only for 17. Because the law might be changing in 18. So. so if we get this in before they change it, we can do the 17 sale the same way they did it last year. Yeah, it was very successful. Okay, is there a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Motion by Mr. Root, second by Mr. Farrell. Roll call, please. Mr. Farrell? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mrs. Passio? Yes. Mr. Ranieri? Yes. And Mr. Root? Yes. Uh, I was, uh, this resolution is adopted, and that bond ordinance was adopted. Forgot resolution 17 100 is resolution regarding employment. Uh, let me go over this for everyone first. Oh, this is a this is letter of resignation from Ms. Harper. Is there a copy of that resignation letter? Paul just handed it to us as we. Uh, yeah, I know. We're, we're, I, we're, have we're, it somewhere. Probably, probably, probably. Uh, it's on in the package. I might have left it. It was uh, a. Yeah, let me read that, please. Hold on. <laughs> uh, Christine Harper, our police uh, clerk, uh, to Mayor and Council, please accept this letter of resignation effective Friday, June 30th, 2017. She did give us proper notice. She's leaving on good standing. She simply got a job at another uh, government agency. So. Uh, so that's for me. So we need a resolution to author to uh, accept this letter of resignation. I'll make a resolution to accept this. A motion. I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll motion. second that motion. Motion by Mr. Ranieri, second by Ms. Passio. Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Mm -hmm. I accept her resignation with regret. Um, yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Ruth. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay, now resolution 17-101, and I apologize, there's been a, a lot going on in the municipality. So if you have any questions, let's, let's uh, hash them all out. Um, so we have resolution 17-101, it was the resolution confirming 2017 appointments. I will read them for you. In the construction department, we have Diane Offerley as a provisional records technical technician one, 35 hours at $15 an hour. Carol Fontano is a temporary part-time technical assistant at $25 an hour. Uh, so that's the, that's the official title, technical assistant to the construction official. And in the police department, we have Christine Harper as a temporary part-time police clerk with a maximum of 25 hours per week until September 30th at 22.50 an hour. So I'll explain all three to everyone because I know a lot's been going on. Some of you know what's going on, some don't. So uh, obviously we had Ms. Elkins retire very abruptly and the department was trying to work it out by bringing in someone who had a technical assistant certificate. Ms. Montano is the full-time technical assistant in Barrington. She cannot work more than a few hours here and there. The problem with that is, is that the window is closed. There's no one there to answer the phone. There's no one there to take the money. There's no one there to hand anything out. Mr. Macbeth and Mr. Knight were very adamant that we needed somebody in there. We did try to find another borough employee to do this. There was no one available to move into a, into a different position. Obviously, you know, we're a little thin right now with all our employees. So what a records technician one is, is, an un, is a classified non-competitive position. This is just a what, The temporary, the part-time technical, excuse me, the technical assistant to construct official is a classified competitive position. So eventually, we have, we have to go out. Civil service will post a test for this position. So once again, we're just doing basically a bridge here to try to get us past this. Mrs. Alperley and any other person who wants to take the test is welcome to take the test and to apply for this position once civil service does it. The issue is, let's be clear, you could take civil service anywhere from seven months to a year to do this process to schedule the test. Yes. Seven months to a year. Yes. So in the interim, that's why we have what's called provisional, which we use the word temporary, but they use the word provisional in civil service. So we have somebody in. Ms. Harper is in a similar situation by losing our police clerk. This is also a classified competitive position. And we could bring in a contemporary person also. But at this point, she is willing to help us in her other job. She's, a, she's, able, to, she's, she's able to come in on Thursdays and Fridays. When is she Thursday? Christine is our current. Christine is our current. So we're going to do it. So she's willing to come back and help us. Thursdays and Fridays, Chief, if you want to help me out. Wednesdays and Thursdays. Wednesdays, Wednesdays, and, Thursdays. Wednesdays and Thursdays. So she's willing, the Chief is going to set up a schedule, she'll be paid hourly. The reason her, her salary actually goes up is because it's really, we're looking at it as, as she's just a part-time employee. Uh, um, it's kind of like time and a half of what she normally gets paid. This way, for example, payroll is due next week. She's willing to come in on Sunday to do the payroll for the police department. She's willing to do the, uh, uh, the reports that are due every month. Uh, the other employee that's in that department is not familiar with all these things, so we need, once again, a little bridge to get over this. The reason we're, we're extending it for three months is because, it's, once again, it's a temporary position, so within three months uh, we can reevaluate it or decide what to do. The chief is in the process right now of starting to look at potential new employees. We have to deal with that. So, do you have any questions for these three, three people that are going on? Carol how, how often do we get her? Carol is only able to work two days a week in the evening, but she's willing to help us catch up a little bit. She's going to take a day off from her full-time job. She's in there right now. So if you went in there, she was in there right now. And uh, she worked with Mr. Mecca and Barrington. So she's familiar with Chris and Keith. You know, they all work part-time in different places. The problem, once again, is she can't leave her job until 4, until four o'clock. So any other questions? I mean, did you get all that? I mean, it's a little, a lot going on. With civil service, there's potential, definitely for the technical assistant, to have to be a test. The police clerk, the chief, is, he's discussing how he wants to maybe handle that. The, the, the clerks are different ratings for different clerks. So, you know, so the police clerk is a little more complicated. Other than that, I think it's our motion to approve.
Okay, so a motion by Ms. Passio, second by Ms. Kelly. Roll call, please. Mrs. Kelly. Yes. Mrs. Passio. Yes. Mr. Farrell. Yes. Mr. Bruton. Yes. And Mr. Yes. Five All right, this resolution is adopted. Um, did we forget any other resolutions? We got them all in here? Okay. So a new business discussion for this meeting. Discussion of shared, shared service agreement with Barrett. Let me just preface this before the attorney uh, comes in. If everyone recalls, Barrington basically uh, disbanded their construction department and they uh, basically hired all of Runnymede's uh, inspectors. But what they would rather do is have a shared service with us and pay them separately. So the idea is, is that Mr. Mecca, um, Mr. Knight, Mr. I don't think Mr. Conway, uh, but four of the five inspectors would be working both in Barrington and Runnymede. So what the advantage would be with a shared service agreement would be that residents from both communities could at least contact these gentlemen uh, or ladies during their normal hours that they're working. Um, they wouldn't necessarily be able to come to Runnymede to get a permit for Barrington, but if they wanted to see Mr. Mecca on a Wednesday night, they could come see him and review something with him and ask him questions. Now, there's no cost to the borough of Runnymede. We would simply, whatever the, whatever the payment that Barrington is willing to pay these inspectors would simply flow through our payroll. So we would just write one payroll check out. As everyone knows, our payroll clerk is the Barrington payroll clerk. So she would just simply write all these checks uh, and we would get uh, reimbursed for the uh, cost for, for everything. Every so if employees made ten dollars an hour, but it's an extra two dollars an hour for all these benefit packages, we would be compensated for that. So what is the advantage for running? The advantage for running meet is the fact that these gentlemen would be more accessible to our our, uh, our residents and to us because they would be they would be our employees working in two different locations. So for hypothetically, if an inspection would typically be done on Wednesday on run meet and, and the, one of the inspectors is in Barrington on Tuesday, he could do the inspection in run meet on Tuesday. So it gives a little more flexibility. Hopefully it leads to more working together with this. As you can see, Carol is the technical assistant in Barrett. Problem is she can't be in two places at the same time. So this is where we still have some issues with this. Um, I, I don't think it hurts us. I think it's really just that it's more advantageous really for our employees, somewhat to our, our residents. Uh, I think it's just, uh, I'll let the, the solicitor at least chime in a little bit. So this is what they're in the process of asking us to do. Len? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, so we're protected. Uh, they flooded the draft of a, of a shared services agreement. It's flooding. It needs to be, it needs to be picked up. Uh, and we'll make it very clear that this is a net zero outlay from us. That the reimbursement will cover all of the, not only the salary, You look suspect, Miss Passio. Oh, no. oh no? Oh, okay. I saw your face. This is why. Is there any questions though about something like this? I love shared service. Yeah. You know that. Well, we do get we do get credit for it, and that was one of the reasons, you know, and, and the fact of writing people two checks. I mean, I would argue that, you know, if, if you were to interview all our inspectors, most of them work in anywhere from two to five towns. I mean, Mike, you know, I mean, they work in Chris works in four towns. Uh, Keith works in two towns. Uh, Joe works in four towns. So they all work in a bunch of different towns. The problem is the technical assistance. That's where the problem comes in because the technical assistant is really in the municipality at all times. And then these inspectors aren't as, aren't as uh, accessible as, uh, as they should be. So once again, we'll wait to see if something comes back. I, I, I don't think it really hurts us and maybe it helps us in the long run. Uh, discussion of GW contract. Um, that's what Mr. <coughs> Uh, William and myself are going over. Um, if everyone remembers, we signed at the last meeting a memorandum basically agreeing to the terms. And the terms were pretty simple in the sense that 
The only changes from previous contracts was that over the, over the four years of the term, they were getting a 1.5% raise, a 2, a 2, and a 2. And the biggest changes were new hirees who no longer receive lifetime health benefits mm -hmm. and can't current and no longer current employees and new hire and new hires would not be uh, eligible for major illness. And like I like to say to the audience all the time, everyone remembers what major illness is. The idea is that someone gets sick and they don't use their sick time. So this gets rid of people have sick days, they can use their sick days, or they could go into state disability. In all of our paychecks, we pay a state disability into the state disability fund. So if an employee were to be seriously injured outside of work, not work but time related. You know, hurt themselves at home. They would file for state disability after they've exhausted their sick days, and then whatever state disability pays them is what they get. Previous practice was the borough paid 100% of the salary, and I'll be clear to everyone: there was no incentive to come back to work because if you're getting 100% of your salary, why would you come back to work? So disability insurance pays a portion. I don't believe it's taxable. Does anybody know that answer? I don't think it's taxable. Uh, but the, under the old system, you know, in theory, they were next to the employee was supposed to send back the money they got from the disability. Most did, but not all did. No one was ever sued. <coughs> you know, the, 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 the better way to have done it would be the <coughs> checks were sent back. Not the checks that bus, but probably can't be done. Can't be or you're just paying the difference. Yeah. So you're getting $150 and you were making 200 so you're getting 150 we'll give you 50 Okay, But this is better that we're not, you know, if they want to go out and get supplemental disability plans, et cetera, they can, but it takes it takes that burden off of us. Um, and the, uh, uh, well, this was contractual. Is this was in all of our current contracts. Right. So we're, we're slowly getting... We're slowly the, moving away from this. With, the, with, the, with the medical now, Sick days now. Well, sick days are cumulative. Yeah, they don't expire. Not expire. Where they used to expire in the past. And and vacation days are used and we're losing unless we prevent someone from taking them. They can carry them for a year. Uh, that's civil service. The uh, so we've eliminated most for the most part the, the lifetime benefit for medical insurance, where we're going to cover you when you retire until you're 65, in which case you go on. Medicare. If you happen to be in the federal employee still at age 65, you still are required to go on Medicare, but we will we become the secondary insurance. So we're not taking away any employee after the employee's insurance, but we're putting them on their own after 65. Uh, I think there's a couple people grandmothered into that uh, that will have the other coverage, one, maybe two people, I think it's not many. But moving forward, we're, 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 we're going to be out of the post-retirement insurance business for the first part. It's going to take a while. Because it's enormously expensive. Yeah. And it doesn't get cheaper. We have 22 current retirees that we pay health insurance for at a cost of almost $200,000 a year. So that number is just going to continue to increase. People are living longer, and health insurance is more expensive. So it is what it is. Okay, so GW contract. The only thing I was going to ask everyone tonight, and I know you guys didn't read it, and that makes it a little bit difficult. What do you think? I mean, the only thing I was going to ask is the authorization from council to sign the contract once the union signs it. You, know, do you see what I'm saying? Now, I don't know if we can get a copy of it, and we can put that on there as a contingency. I would put it on for the July 5th meeting. Just put it on for July 5th. What we'll happened by then? I've sent it out today. It went out, uh, and there's some corrections that I have to make. Uh, one substantive, the rest of the paper, which I will do tomorrow and have sent out tomorrow. So, but the chances of them signing it before now on July the 5th or Slim and Nam and they both left town. Um, so I think if we just put it on for us, for the authorization for the document to be signed, once it's signed by them, then whenever that comes in signed by them, we can just get the signatures and we know we don't have to drag it out. And then part of that is that it, what we're trying to do is to be fair to the employees. So once the contract is signed, then we can do their retro. This contract is three years out. So I feel bad for the... Yeah, we're, we're two full years. Yeah, I feel bad for the employees, especially June's retirement. Christine is, is, is uh, resigning. It'd be nice to clean it up, give them their last paycheck, but without this, we're not going to have it by the end of month. So, it's, so the one and a half that Nick talked about was for the last half of 
15. And we thought 16 to 27, which is still 18 to 27. We don't have to start negotiations again for G, so I'm 14 months. Wow. Okay. So we'll just wait till July 5th for everyone. And what we'll do is, Len, after he cleans up the contract, everyone can have a copy of it and read it. Uh, the only thing that gets a little tricky is you do have to look at the previous contract to see really the changes. You know, there are minimal changes, like I said. There's only three changes, really. The, the, the rate, the, the salary, and then the salary. I can do a little better when I send it to the final version. This same section. And you guys should read the whole contract. It's 46 pages long, but you get the 46 pieces of paper. Uh, because there's so many things that you might look at and say, why do we do these things? You know how we talk about that a lot? Why do we, we have some archaic stuff in it. The problem you have to, be, I have to be clear though is everything has to be negotiated. You know, we can't change anything without both sides agreeing to change any question. When uh, employees in the future, Go on Medicare at 65. Yeah. Secondary. What's the savings there? So $27,000. It's a. It's, it's, it's a. It's a. Not substantial, but it, Joyce, yeah. Joyce sees the health insurance bill. Well. It, it's probably about 30%, 40% savings for us. Yeah. When you turn 65, you have to go on. But that's current. That's for people who are active. It's called Medicare Advantage. Yeah. Okay. So there is, if you look at that, you last right, I think Joyce made who somebody looks at the bills. If you look at the health insurance bill, you'll see the older gentleman who's been gone. It must be significant because my wife was a teacher for 30 years and retired. And because she was 30 years, she was able to have coverage for her life. I just told her to keep her on the ventilator. Well, make that, make that clear. There is no survivorship. There's no survivorship. So, okay. so, so, so anyway, so, so I, I turned 65 and it says yes, yesterday. Yes. <laughs> 67? It doesn't matter. So whatever year was. My, my birthday is in December. Happy birthday. Thank you. This is my half birthday. So um, in October of that year, you get letter one for the pension. You tell, remind, telling me that I have to sign up for Medicare. You? Yeah. Well, because I'm, I'm, I'm older than my wife, so I'm hitting 65 first. In November, they sent me a second. So we have to, we have to so your point is there's a savings. Yeah, the pension does. It. Yeah, but well, we would do it. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, so it must be pretty good because they were like on me like yeah. plus. Right. Um, and, and so and then I did what I did. And there's been, it's been seamless. They just send me a new card, and which my new medical card has everything is exactly the same except it's now called Medicare. 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 But it's pretty seamless. But it has to be There's a savings, if that's what you know. I don't know the, the exact amount. Yeah. But they started this about three years ago. Yeah. Yeah, the advantage is a savings. And, and it was a big deal because they didn't have to pay for the medical insurance. Yeah. Yeah. It was a big deal. But car companies out of business paying medical insurance. Yeah. So uh, we'll wait until July. Hopefully, this will all be done well. Discussion of the motor vehicle agreement. Well, have you have a copy of it? I have a ring. When your resolution, or just do it in July? It's the exact same contract that we had previously. So, Chief, it's the exact same amount of money. It's the exact same hours. Nothing changed. The DMV, it's the same hours. It's the same amount of money. So, basically, it covers our cost to pay the employees. They're from 11 to 5? It depends on each day. Certain days they're there more. Certain days they're there less. It's outlined in the agreement. But I'll bet nothing changed from the previous year. Correct? Yes. <laughs> The only thing that has changed is we do pay our officers five dollars more an hour to be there. That was part of an agreement we made with the with the department to resolve a comp time issue. Correct? Yes. Okay. Did you get a copy of this publication? What the Did you get a new agreement? Uh, no, I haven't yet. Well, let's get you a copy. All right. Okay. So it's forty-two. Is this any different? Forty-two hours is the minimum, a maximum of uh, twenty-one hundred twenty-four hours per annum. Uh, 8.30 a.m. on Saturdays and 11 a.m. Monday through Friday is, I think, when they start. Has anything changed? I don't know. No. I'll get you. It sounds like the same contract. Yeah. 
Mr. DeHart dropped them off. Okay, so we'll do that at the July meeting. Uh, resolution to move funds to different construction. I have no idea what this yeah, is. Yeah, what is that? I was given this by, I was given this by Roberta. Apparently it looks like they deposited $65 In the into wrong the zoning account. account and it should have went into the building permit account. That's what this looks like. Okay. I have to get more details. So we'll do a resolution in July to move the money. To move the money from one account to the other. Just be clear, we have 17 checking accounts. Uh, yes. So it's easy to make a, a wrong deposit. Uh, that's enough that I have. We'll go around the table at this point. Can I read the letter that Patty gave me to read? Oh, sure. Read this is, uh, thank you, dear Borough of I am very thankful and honored to be the recipient of the Bill McGrath Memorial Award. I would like to express my gratitude to you all for considering me as the grantee of this award. You can have faith in me that I will use this money for a good cause and only for something that will benefit me in the future. Once again, the award is greatly appreciated. Lots of thanks, Matthew Vance. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's great. Good. Okay. Anything else? No. Ms. Pascal, you want to go first? Oh, of course. You know I like to go first. All right. So we are having our Fourth of July parade on the Fourth of July, hopefully. And of course, if there's some kind of torrential downpours, like a monsoon or something, then we will have it. Uh, rain date will be for July 8th, uh, but that will only be for the main parade at 1 o'clock. The baby uh, parade and also the bicycle parade, which begins at 9 a.m. at the Harry Williams on the 4th of July, will be rain or shine. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, will be rain or shine uh, because we can always go inside um, the uh, community center, as we did one year. We did do that one year. Uh, I, I have been asked um, what time is the parade, uh, what time are the programs. Uh, the 4th of July booklets are now out. Uh, they are at the borough. They are at the police lot lobby. They are here. <laughs> they are at the Acme, Philly Diner. They're all along the businesses, Wawa, Deluxe Bakery, uh, Luigi's Pizza. Uh, so they're all along the pike. I'm, I'm trying to distribute as many as I can to all the businesses. And you can always call me if you want one. I will personally deliver it to you. So, um, you know. <laughs> so, we're, no. Well, hopefully they're going to be handed out to the whole town. You know, they're going to come and get them. Oh, okay. So we're not using the. Like, years ago. And also the library. Years no years ago, uh, they either handed them out or yeah. Yeah, um, somebody thought, I don't ever remember them being mailed, but as you know, mailing them, they were always handed out. Okay. We found them on your door. But I have, you know, um, I have delivered some uh, throughout the, my, my town, so some have them and others will have them. Did you say when the parade was starting? The parade starts at one sharp, and um, <laughs> Paul's out there and he makes sure it is, it is at one sharp. We are also having antique car uh, judging. And the Toyota is going to judge, come out and judge the cars. Although, so they're going to be lined up along Toyota, Philly Diner, all around there. All right. And Toyota, one of the gentlemen, two of the gentlemen in sales will come out and judge the cars. We have really nice plaques that were designed um, from Paul's Trophy. Special, did you get the uh, email I sent you? I sent you a picture of it. Anyway, they're very nice um, uh, plaques. And uh, we're also going to have a uh, float contest. So for the best decorated float, um, there'll be a $100, $50, and a $25 gift card given out to the best float. Uh, I do need some best judges. First three floats, you mean? The, the nicest decorated, <coughs> best decorated float. Three, yes. Three. 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 yes. Mm -hmm. First, second, and third prom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So well, I will need some judges for that. Um, let me think what else. We are going to have, on July 19th, we are going to have a concert. Uh, it will be a blues and jazz band uh, at 7 o'clock at the Harry Williams uh, outside. And if it rains, we'll have it inside. We did have Greater Kensington, and it did rain prior, and we had it inside. And it was a, it was a great show. I will suggest that uh, it's very hot. We yes, we will inside. move it inside. It was inside. It was air conditioned. The sound system was great. Yeah, it was it was really really good. 
Uh, also, whoever, um, you, everyone should have gotten a newsletter. If you didn't, we have them here at the borough on page nine. If you go to page nine, it's dates to remember. So we have all of our, our events and things that are going on in our town. So, um, John, is there anything else? Um, the parade, we're gonna have free water ice from Anthony's uh, at the baby parade, bicycle parade. Uh, we will have, uh, we will be, uh, John and I will be narrating the parade as it comes down the street. Um, I and um, the gardener, they will put the popcorn machine out oh, there. Great, so we will have popcorn. Albano's. Okay, great, so we'll have popcorn in front of uh, Albano and uh, Viola's office. And uh, also, uh, afterwards, VFW will be giving out uh, the borough uh, supplies with uh, uh, hot dogs and ham uh, hot dogs and uh, 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 I don't know. And soda, soda and drink snacks, snacks refreshments, refreshments. So you're invited back over to the VFW. Um, again, we're going to pray for good weather. Okay. And if not, it'll be on the eighth on Saturday at one o'clock. So all right. Thank I think you. that's it. Okay, I want to go. Mr. Ranieri? Thank you, Mayor, Council. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, John. Uh, not, that, not a lot to talk about in finance, it's been a little okay. slow. Progress. But, uh, but I wanted to say a few things. <laughs> um, we're in a process, um, we're still in the process of acquiring our, our short term uh, short term funding for the bond ordinance 1707, but things are moving forward with all those capital purchases. Um, over the last couple of weeks, we had a few more capital investments in our heating and cooling systems uh, in this building. Uh, we put, uh, we're in the process, or they're either in, a seven and a half ton and a five ton system. These are more capital improvements. They both are in. Oh, they are both completed? I don't know if they're completed, but they're in. They're in. So these are uh, 20 year old systems. We're upgrading them, which is fantastic. Um, and I just want to touch base on the Harry Williams building on, the, on June 21st, and Patty already mentioned it, the mayor mentioned it with the Kensington String Band. We had the, it was the first time we had, I, I guess, uh, music and entertainment with over 75 people there. And the air conditioning was used, and it was really great. It was cool, comfortable. The bleachers were nice. Everybody was happy. First time I sat by the bleachers. Everybody was happy with how, how nice it sounded <clears throat> and how comfortable it was. So I think that we've got a, a future of great events in that. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, that's another yeah. capital investment that I think is a huge success. So. Other than that, it's progress. Okay, thank you. Uh, I did forget one thing. Can I speak? Okay. Um, on uh, please, please join us. The borough and mayor and council would like everyone to join us on Monday, July third, at nine p.m. in Barrington for their fireworks celebration. And as we share Independence Day, so come on out to Barrington uh, at nine p.m. Uh, someone did ask me so. where the fireworks get shot off at. I'm pretty sure it's the Woodland you, School. Yes, it is the Woodland School. It, but it's yeah. best to park. But you can park the, anywhere. Park Just take your car into Barrington and they'll direct you. On the or, bike wherever you park, you'll get to see. Yes, it's very nice this way. Everybody parks because it's fun to do something good. There's just so many things. Ready? Anything? Ms. Kelly? Thank you. The last caucus, we talked about the playground issues. Yes. And um, I got a buy this month because uh, John Seville was not at the gym. Good. So but I do have to respond to him next month. What is going on with the playground? And how is it coming along? And what kind of funding are we getting? And got to report two things that you guys can chime in. I think that uh, Mr. Lawmanstein and Mr. Wazog met with Mr. Swarski down there. The county hasn't made their final decision about the 25,000, we feel pretty good about it. We did have $17,000 left over and some other funds that we could possibly use to do that. And Mr. Wozniak, you can talk about spending it. So the money, we can, we have some of our own money, however, we were hoping that the county would pay for it. And then, that's the 25,000 that dollars grant? That, that would be the 25,000. Yeah. <coughs> oh, and then the last thing is, uh, on two occasions, I've already spoken, thank God, uh, Len, I forgot this one. We, um, uh, Mr. Sampolsky, uh, the commander of VFW has uh, basically brokered a deal between the property owner to give us the land, and, and as long as we do the legal end of it, to uh, parcel, it, parcel it off to us. So both, we found out that the VFW playground is not owned by the borough. It is owned by Sports uh, Outlet, Depot. Depot. And Sports Depot is willing to give it to the borough. 
because there was a concern that if it wasn't owned by us, the county might question it. So we would simply need a legal description divided up. Our piece on it is its own block. Okay. So the only thing he, he did ask us for, and I thought that it was it was uh, reasonable, was that the taxes that he's paying currently for the lot would be, of course, taken off his tax bill, which would make sense if it's a separate block of lot. I didn't realize it was a separate block of lot. And then he'll come off his tax bill. So that was about it. Okay, so uh, basically, basically by next month we should have a, a better answer for me so that when John Seville yeah. orders me at the Don't gym. tell him about the uh, property by <laughs> the first of the year. Yeah. <laughs> Guaranteed by the first of the year. <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know, I just want to be able to tell John what's going on. Just, uh, tell him we're working with the Jackson Moore Steve the Recreation Fund yeah. to get that money to do it. Okay. You can, and Mr. Seville already took a wear back. I spoke with him to tell him we're in the process of it. So out of the recommendation letter, we did the severe items, we removed them, made it safe. So right now we have kind of like a, a window to uh, where it's safe and then we get the funding together. So we don't have to close the park. Okay. She removed the Okay, okay. Um, the other thing is, um, we are in the process of getting the Where's that going to be held? It's going to be at the Harry Williams. Have it's we made clear where the dates so are? We've got to make sure all that. I'm trying to get the dates. They're going to give you the dates, and then they will need a bus for one day. They're going to take it um, somewhere. For what ages? It's going to be eight going into eighth grade. Okay. Seven is going into eighth. Okay. Looking at 25 uh, kids for us. How much did the bus hold? I think uh, we're going to ask uh, 18. for an enrollment fee of $25. Which you might want to have your enrollment to match our bus. And this is for boys and girls. There's Dan, if you. Yes, we're picking this 25 charge. Boys and girls. Right, what do you think? You can put them in Well, the bus only holds 18. And a van, jail van. I'm just making you aware of that. Might be 20. No, it does. It holds 20. 21? 21. But that includes no super uh, chaperones and all that, right? 21 total. So that's how many. Yeah, 21. Including the driver, right? So two, I think they're they're arranging twenty five anyway. They're going to yeah. transport a couple in the vehicle. Okay, that's up to you. So, but this way they have a round number. Twenty five. Mm -hmm. Like okay. one day we'll do the same day we're going to take them to uh, police academy, which will have a class in session at the time. Oh, um, that's one. We down there and then they'll like the movie. Take okay. them over to um, Central uh, Communications, where they'll get a tour of. Uh, Central and Great's where he went. <laughs> and then uh, one day, fire department is going to teach him uh, CPR or first aid. And prosecutor's office is going to come in and teach uh, computer safety. So we have a lot of things set up. Wow. Very nice. That's going to be wonderful. Awesome. Make sure you have a photographer for yeah. this period. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, that's yeah. great. I mean, the only thing I would be concerned about is the uh, schedule. You know, like you said, the bus is always an issue. The bus can be an issue, and the um, the building can be an issue. Now it's being used a lot. More. We're we're actually going to do it on Tuesday. I already spoke to Harry. Uh, Laurie's off on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so the day we're going to use it is on Tuesday. Okay. I don't, I don't want to go sideways on uh, everything, but we're talking about buses. At this, what point do you need to have a special license, a smaller bus, if we ever own one in the future, not to have certain people? Where everybody could drive. It's all about transport. Anytime you're transporting people, you and have to. Yeah. Smaller van. It's right. a limousine with two people. Yeah. So are we working Taxi driver. Getting other license, or are we working? On? And if we charge. Try. And if there's a fee charge, mm -hmm. it's a whole different inspection of it. Gotcha. So that's that's another. That's the whole. That's the whole legality with Uber and Lyft, and that's why. Because they're not the taxes. Yeah. Okay, well that's great. When does that program start? Do we have a date? No, they're going to give you dates. Yeah, we've got another date, but it will be in August. Great. Sounds great. Anything else? That's it. Okay, great. Uh, Mr. Farmer. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I spoke to Mark today. I'm going to defer on my report, but uh, just a few things to announce. Uh, I don't know if anybody's out there has walked through the borough. It looks great. Waiting for phase two. 
uh, waiting for the start of Oakland and Watson Avenue, which should be in the near future. And uh, Mayor and Council went to ribbon cutting at uh, Cooper Urgent Care today. It's a beautiful facility. Really? It's, it's top notch. I mean, it's it's top notch. Oh. Yeah. That was very nice. Yeah. 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 Was, we had a good turnout. Yes, we did. Council always shows up. Um, I'm going to do the same to defer most of it to uh, Harry, but um, what I do, what I do would like to mention, I'd like to thank United Rental for donating air conditioning to uh, Bolt School during their uh, eighth grade dance. Normally, it's uh, like 150 degrees in that uh, multi-purpose room, and they were able to give us some portable air conditioners. Harry and the guys hooked them up, had most of them running. Uh, and it made it actually made it, you know, nice in there. The kids, with, the kids said when when the parents left, it was it got cool. So um, so it uh, like yeah <laughs> yeah really. But I just want to you know anybody who needs any kind of rental, you know, uh, they really do support our town, United Rental. So if you need any rentals, go to United Rental. They're they're a good company. Um, and then I'll just. Uh, Turn it over to Harry and what's been going on, how much all the work we've been doing. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Wilson? Thank you. Okay, we've been doing a lot. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing is, you know, reported under finances uh, with the air conditioners. We have the new preventive maintenance program with the borough, and uh, as of today, all the units are up and running. Okay, uh, we are still finding a lot of bugs, and once we get. The salad port's running? Or is that heat? <laughs> Salad ports here. Oh, okay. Air conditioning. So right now, with the temperatures the way they are, we're getting up. The uh, unfortunate leak uh, that was found this morning was uh, because of the, one of the condenser drains was blocked from lack of use from the unit that was down. So spiders got in, it did something, and we had the leak. So that was found and repaired. So now we can let it dry out and we'll get the uh, tiles replaced that way. Um, it's been a, it's been a long, tedious process. Uh, but a lot of repairs were needed and we're getting them off the park. Okay. Uh, some minor roof repairs were done down at the library. Uh, to try fixing some leaks that were down there, so they were all completed. Um, just, uh, you know, with the different buildings that we had, I am working with the chief uh, for his capital improvements for the uh, police. police department. That's the uh, patrol room, patrol room uh, upgrades, so we're getting things lined up on air. Floor, epoxy coated floor. Uh, they'll have a uh, new um, desktop area, countertop for uh, three terminals and so forth. So we'll be working hand in hand on that to get that going. Uh, general. Straightening, straightening out the floor too. So yes, that's going to be leveled first and, and taken care of. Yeah, so we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. We are going to be doing our shared service with the uh, High School, uh, Blackwood uh, Regional, mm -hmm. uh, for the electrician for this project. So that's one that taken care of and uh, definitely looks like uh, it be possibly no fee since we've helped them out with a couple landscape projects in the last couple of weeks so we're doing a switch of route there for that. Um, other than that generally with public works we've been moving along we have some guys going to some training uh, classes we have two today for uh, defensive or CDL uh, classes which is required under the uh, Motor transport uh, regulations. Who went to, who went to the CDO? Uh, we had uh, Hank Schreiber and Tom Bauer went. Mm -hmm. So that's Hank all. And Tommy? Yeah. Yes. So yes. they went. Uh, we are working actually on having a heavy equipment class. We're having one of the local vendors that uh, the sales guys stopped in trying to give us one, but we have equipment right now. So we're get, getting that to safety service on our equipment. We're on a safety class for us for our heavy equipment. So we're trying to push that on until the fall. But it takes some time to get things lined up with the with the vendors itself. Um, yard waste is going well. Uh, I did show the mayor the other day, uh, Monday. Uh, we are seeing a savings uh, with the yard waste with the new vendor that we're dumping it to. Um, practically about six hundred dollars savings from normal fees, about eight fifty, and we're per week. Per week, we're down to two. Taking it to Lindsay, the bill was one hundred seventy dollars. 
compared to a nine hundred dollar budget. Twenty four hundred dollars a month every month. Potentially. Yeah. That's great. So I mean that's one of the things that we're looking at for some state. Um Dole Park was uh renovated. We had a new uh dog walk uh I guess a ramp or something that was falling apart. The guys rebuilt that. Then they remulch it. We do have this week, uh, we will be putting in the uh, instruments that were donated from the Rotary Club down at Green Acres. Oh, so great. they'll be installed prior to the weekend. Uh, the footings were already put in, so now it's just mount them. So the guys will be doing that later. Did you? Yes, sir. I can't wait to bring Can it we in. get uh, Patty and I were up at the, the uh, Green Acres in the pavilion? People are leaving their trash on the tables. No trash can in that whole area. We're all out around this. We're like valet service for trash. We, we need trash. trash. We don't have. We need, we need you want it closer to where they're eating? I think it's nowhere near there. Yeah, it's on the other side. You unfortunately, you kind of want that away. Well, and I say that because it's unfortunately, because it's bees and so forth. Just, just trash. take notice of it when you go out there, and you'll see. We could probably put one. A little bit closer. Okay. We, we will. Maybe the bar. Just, just a temporary. Like a, just, we, just we, we will. Duly noted. Duly noted, and we will. That's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't uh, happen. You want to talk a little bit about the Fourth of July, the plans for the Fourth of July? Uh, we are working on the fight as we uh, today. The guys were out. We got um, been working on the beds of the trees, mulching tomorrow. The banners will be replaced up. Uh, we are utilizing a shared service with uh, Belmar with our bucket truck that they received through a project with uh, Barrington. So we're going hopefully in partnership with the bucket truck that they have. And that will give us a call savings in due time for the traffic light call outs and so forth. Because right now, we don't, without having a bucket truck, we have to call a technic pro in. And unfortunately, on the weekends, that's like a 550 to $800 bill just to change the light bulb. Is that on our wish list possibly someday? Yeah, he, he's been talking to Belmar about uh, splitting the cost of getting this truck up to par. So the idea is, is that we would either own it or share sure, it or great. something like that. And then it would either be housed in front of me or housed in Belmar or Both. whatever. Well, we just done now. We'll but nobody needs a full-time bucket truck. Yeah, what we just worked out right now is they just did a lot of repairs on it, but we paid for the inspection of it to get it recertified. So our fee of inspection was $380, but they paid a lot more than that for all the service that had to be done in customer mechanics time. So it was definitely a... We made out on it, so we'll be utilizing that tomorrow because it is certified and we'll be able to use it now. So we're talking about the, uh, what's happening on Thursday? Who's Thursday? Thursday is the new courtroom chairs come in. That, that I'm going oh, to defer, that, that I'm defer to, to Mrs. Pinto because this is her project. <laughs> it is Mrs. Pinto's project. <laughs> but Mr. Walsak has to make sure these chairs get removed. They're going to go upstairs until we decide how we're going to do with them. And then we have the office furniture coming in. Joy and so 99 chairs will be in. 99? 96 chairs. So you have 96 chairs. It was the way it worked. Are they being zip ties or are they clear? They're bolted. There's a mechanism. There's a little bit of work for your guys to bolt them together. It's a factory job. It's a clip that comes from the manufacturer. And then the two desks are up from it. So that's Thursday. Very nice. So a lot of things have been going on, especially a lot of preventive maintenance, and we're moving forward with it. And each month, you'll see more improvements. So, thank, you. thank you. Did you have anything else? Thank you. I did just quickly. Uh, I wrote. God, we think a month ago. To all the residents. Oh. Of, uh, I'm sorry. I wrote about a month ago to all the residents of Caliport. Now that everything was done and saying, you know, you guys got to step up and do this, and so on and so forth, and I've gotten exactly this response. So we're not doing anything there until they get their act together and communicate with us. So. What does that eliminate? We're not doing anything? We're not cutting grass. We're not maintaining anything. When, if it's the winter time, we're not going to do this. What do we do about the road? Do we dedicated to ourselves? We, no, we haven't done it yet. We, should I don't we? Believe, I don't think we? I don't think we should do anything until until this whole thing. That They'll be responsible they'll to take the snow on the road. road so stop plowing it? It's not, you know, stop it's, sleeping it's not our road. Yes. But it's still not our road. So, I mean, it's it, sooner or later, somebody's got to wake up out there and say, you know, they've had free lunch for how many years? <laughs> so, I, I would just do nothing and hope that I can send follow up letters. Well, maybe I'll do that. Sir, okay. 
And then you sent a letter to Bassett Avenue also. I thought you sent a letter to them. Bassett. Yeah. You did send I saw a copy. Okay. I just don't remember Bassett. Bassett was the storm room. I thought you guys were looking at that. Oh, that's the easement. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I sent letters out on the easement. There was one individual who had contacted you and said, you know, no problem, I'm going to do it. He just never responded to me. But the other guy did, the other neighbor, and I explained it to him, and he's fine, he understands it. So I was hoping the other guy would communicate it so I could explain to him that he was going to see surveyors out there because we have to go do a survey so we can do a legal. But Mark's just going to take care of that. He'll get me the legals. I'm going to do the easements, and I'm going to send them out to him and hope they'll sign. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, no, progress, sorry. Thank you. Mr. Bashley? <laughs> uh, Mr. Mayor, um, I apologize for not getting the stats report out early. I already apologized to Bob. They didn't want to leave him on the hook there. But, uh, really? Four o'clock today? Is it no, it was supposed to be done a lot sooner, but unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, my son's baseball team keeps winning, so I have to take vacation days. <laughs> So I've been at a baseball tournaments the last two weekends and into Monday, so I apologize for that. But uh, under general engineering, we've already talked about the open space application for the VFW Park uh, Craig, and Harry and I met with the open space committee on June 9th. The meeting went well. They seemed receptive to what we were doing. We explained the problem of the borough not owning a property yet, but they had no issue with that. It seemed as long as we move forward with uh, taking it ownership of that, so we are going to move forward and work with the solicitor on that. One thing that's not in the report is um, our office went out and looked at pedestrian bridges in Green Acres Park. I owe Harry an inspection report with our recommendations, and that's on my list of things to do, and unfortunately, in my haste, that did not make it into the status report. The DOT project for Elm Avenue and Broadway, uh, we're going to be starting a survey next week. We're trying to maximize the amount of construction we can do for the $208,000 grant, which will cover $182,000 in construction and $26,000 for inspections. We're going to try and make the $182,000 do as much road work as we can, starting at Smith Lane going towards Broadway. And when the handicap ramps in, we want to put in at the ballparks. Um, the ADA hallway and elevator, which is phase two, uh, we are approaching a 90% completion right now. I want to get together with the engineering committee, show them what our plans are so we, we can finalize and make adjustments so when we go out to bid we don't have any change orders like we had in phase one yes. when there were some discrepancies with what some office personnel wanted and what some, I don't need to go into it, but we had two change orders that we weren't prepared to do. Uh, so we're, we want to make, don't make that same mistake twice. Did that. you speak to Adam at all about this at all? Because he was here the other day. He was here. He's, I talked to him and he wants to meet sometime next week. He thinks we'll be at 90%. Okay. Uh, Just to make everybody clear, what's going to happen is upstairs is the, really where there's a little bit of issues. Is there needs to be the hallway has to be opened up so that you when you come up the stairs or come off the elevator, you, the means of egress would be straight down the hallway to go out the fire escape if you had to go out the fire escape. So that would be a little bit of work to do that. And then um, the only thing I had suggested was to build one partition wall. As you guys know, when we go up to that conference room, and it's all open in that area, and if the floor goes two different floor levels, and I suggest that we put a wall there, it would at least segregate those two, because if we decide to use one area for something, you know, it would at least separate it so we have a little separation. But the only big issue, and I don't think it should be part of this plan, is fixing that bathroom up there at this time. I know money's always an issue. There's a very bad bathroom upstairs. Eventually, it'll need to be redone, and I don't know if it's affected by the hallway. Hopefully it's not. You know, there might need to be a couple of partition walls built upstairs just to go down the hallway. Everybody knows to get out that where there used to be a fire escape. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, real quick, just because we're talking about upstairs, so there will be a need for additional uh, air conditioning. Yeah, this was not going to be part of this. The, the, the idea is, as you know, these things cost us. We always bother. It's always a fortune to do all this stuff. Once the bulk of it's done, we can always get. Our contractor maybe to change it, change something up there, you know, different things like that, and fix some of these smaller issues. Yeah, that's on the list. So, so we're approaching ninety percent. So we'll, we'll hopefully have a meeting next week, hash out some of the fine details, complete the plans, advertise in July, have the bid opening in August, and contracts. We get, I guess, the, we 
get a word this September meeting, and then 10 to 15 days for the contracts, and we're out to construction mid September, October. Will, will this <coughs> disturb the office people, or will this be outside of the office people then? There should be a, there will be minimal <coughs> disturbance. It won't be like what we went through with phase one. Yeah. There'll be a partition wall that should segregate. So that at least two of the two of the windows will be open for the front office, but the, the, because of the way the elevator is being cut in, the more than likely there'll be some type of separating those last couple of windows. Because if, if you picture in the in the lobby, you have to cut a hole in that floor to put an elevator shaft, and that's going to be right as soon as you open the door, it's basically right there. So I think we just have to close it off so they can work. But the, the front office will remain open. Yeah, the door will remain open and things. So, and the front parking lot can remain open. There will be some disturbance, but not major. No. Right. <coughs> uh, Bassett Avenue grant we talked about. I'm working with the solicitor on the uh, easement descriptions. The RYA parking lot, we completed the survey and we gave Harry a, a red line of how to go about putting some inlets in. He did some preliminary work out there, dug a pit, put some stone in it, and oh. it seems to be working right now. Um, we might want to do something in conjunction with the Elm Avenue project, but we'll I'll work those details out with Harry, see what the budget is for the parking lot, if we want to start overlaying that or not. Um, the South Oakland Avenue and Washington Avenue project, last uh, last meeting we awarded it the base bid and the ad alternate to Lambert Construction. We sent out all the contracts to them. I'm waiting for them to come back, but we anticipate having the pre-construction meeting probably the week of July 10th, and then we would have construction to start shortly after that. Uh, moving on to the master plan, uh, I talked to Candace, and she's about 85% complete right now. She wants to review some things with Steve Bach and then get together with the engineering committee and let everybody know where we stand, see if there's any recommendations that we want to move forward with. Um, so that's nearing completion, hopefully. With that winding down, she's just starting up the redevelopment study. I believe she's going to be doing a site visit next week and starting that project. The parking lot site plan, um, this is a, the new parking lot out here. There's some punch list items to address. Landberg is going to be out this Friday to do the work and we're going to close the parking lot. So I'll talk to Harry and his crew's going to shut it Thursday night after all the furniture gets delivered and everything. <laughs> They're going to do all the punch list work on Friday, and then we can reopen the parking lot on Monday. So they're fixing some of the asphalt in the parking lot? There's a sink and the hole. brick, too? Or just there's the a sink hole, the brick. There's a cracks in the driveway. From, um, so we have a, a punch list that they're going to work on. Uh, one thing. I'll, I'll talk to Harry about this. We're pulling out some of the dead plants. They, they're they saying they're saturated with water, so we have to work out the sprinkler schedule somehow. Like, There's a sprinkler. Yeah. It wasn't even on. Well, maybe there's a leak. Oh, there were repairs? Send them a bill. I did, I saw that. That would be a... Is there any, I sent it to Adam, too. Is that, is no, it's just not enough blue. I saw it. There's no blue. Well, that, that should have been on. You guys, not bad, but the food guys. So, yeah, I didn't know anything about We have a bill for this rent for company? Maybe we can work something out? So you'll get that to him? Yeah, is that a lot of money? Compact cars. Yeah. 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 Yeah
electric vehicle, we were trying to shoehorn something in to get as many parking spaces okay. as possible. Well, yeah. my, my question, I think, is can you make them both so compact? Or okay. future yeah. locations yeah, that they charging stuff? Yeah, like a team. I think team. We can put a sign that they already hold yeah. in. Future charging stuff. Charging stuff. Yeah. That was trying to shoot one. Yeah, no, I understand. But yeah, theater was. I thought that's why there were cones out there. No, the there's a, oh, okay. a sinkhole there from okay. the drain pipe that's on there. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we're going to need some. I move it. We're packed with cones. There's so many cones out there. Because then remove the cones from the drain. Yeah, we're going to need some. 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 Yeah, we're going to need some.
No, we have not done that for them. We authorized it as we an emergency it. repair, and then during construction, there was three laterals that needed to be replaced. You'll they send said, me all of this? I will send that to you. And that one's done, and it's exactly 54, 1937. I have the paperwork on my desk. I just haven't done our. The other one is 11,000, you said? I believe it's 11,600, but I have to confirm that. But I will get that to you as well. This is, this is what I got today. I don't know if this, anybody can do anything. This is from Adam. Can you contact whoever you were dealing with at Verizon and let them know that the, that the work on our end is complete? And they can come to run the fiber and phone lines through the new conduit. Before that, though, I believe we still need line systems or Liberty Technology to terminate or relocate the lines currently located in the second floor panel. But there have been. Right, Mr. Simon. So yeah, how do you move the lines without Verizon moving? I will. I can't answer that. No, well, on this project, it was when we met with the engineer from Verizon. Verizon's bringing in a whole new set of lines. A whole new set of lines of fiber optics to the communication room, and then once that's done, then the old system. Can, can oh, then they just move them. And then they're only the, right. we're only looking at minimal time of our system. And then they'll come back and take down the other. While they're putting in. Gotcha. Yeah, that's so, the whole reason. So, so Verizon has to be first. The, the information that before yeah, I left for vacation, they were going to set up that time. And it was, I assumed it was going to be when I was away, but it never occurred. Never occurred. Never occurred, okay. So that's what it is. They gotta bring in the lines first, then the other company needs to switch it over. But are both up. lines hot at the same time? Yeah, they're not gonna get rid of one until it'll work. Yeah, but how do you have two, how do you have two wires coming into a building with? Because then they'll notify Verizon, okay, they'll cut, they'll, they'll cut show the them. line, recharge the new line, then they gotta hook up all the new lines into our, Plugs inside the building underneath the steps. It's, it's something like six hours, Joyce, that the system will be down. Oh, uh, 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 six hours. Wow. No. <coughs> no, we probably have to pay and get an overtime charge. Yeah. <laughs> four to six, I think four to six, but they would start at very early in the morning. Wasn't it six a.m.? It was six, six, six a.m. start. So we would only be down, we were hoping for an hour, yeah. but. I will try and I'll try and make that happen for you, Joyce. And then I heard from Mr. Kelly from Verizon because I included him on the. Why are you bringing this up? We don't want to talk about this. You don't want to talk about this. Okay, I just want to see it move forward. Big telephone company. They they, they charge us fifteen thousand dollars for the telephone. The Orchard Avenue Center was submitted the final payment. Recommendation on June 14th. That was to close that job out. And nothing really further other than. So we have to approve that at July 5th meeting? Uh, it should just be a payment. We already approved the change. Okay, so change order one final that was approved back in, I don't know, resolution 1766 approved the change so order. Final one. Okay. This was just to release the retainage and the change order work. You want to make sure Greg takes care of that one? What is it? This one? It was Orchard Avenue Sanitary Sewer Rehab. It's the change order work on. So 32,000 is that the one? 4,000 is that the one, yes. Okay. So that would have been. 86. And we are redlining the deluxe bakery plans. Hopefully, it goes back to Kevin Vesky, the county engineer. I want to say this week, but I'm running out of paper for week. It will be done in Florida. The public works program is 2017 deadline. Supposed to have a LSRP done by the end of this year. Do you know anything about that one? Can we find that one out? It's an extension. It's only been 10 years, so it's going to be 10 more. My term will be way up. We are scheduling. We, we are having a scheduling a, a meeting with our LSRP for a Magnolia project. So we will. Same person? Yes. So we will also. Does everybody remember that? There, there was a, the state pushed everything on us. To, Figure out what to do with this garage that had old gas tanks. Yes. I read your stuff. I do read your stuff. Yeah. 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 He stays up all night. He doesn't yeah. sleep. And unless anybody has any further questions. You look bored in the house. Thank you. <laughs>
Okay. Did you have anything else, Eleanor? <laughs> Eleanor? Um, on the uh, 17th of June, uh, the New Beginnings had their open house. You know about that? And I attended, and it was a very wonderful event. Uh, it went on for several hours, and they were very pleased that um, council was there. Right. Um, Nancy Anderson did a great job setting it up. Uh, we certainly have a resource there in Nancy Anderson. She's just <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Great. Um, she brought so much to the table. They had a display table with all the information for people, and um, it, was, it was excellent. Um, they want to use uh, the ROI field on the 12th of August, but we haven't been able to get any um, response. And I know Craig is aware of it. Response from who? Craig, Joyce, August 12th. Who are we trying to get approval from? The ROI president or? Uh, well, we thought that we had to go for Joyce. For the fields? Yeah. Normally the fields are managed by the, the, the baseball, I mean, the, the, the bowl school. They're not using it in August. Yeah. Yeah, what field did you want? Right there by Rose Avenue. The two little fields? No, no. The big field. Oh. Oh, men's, uh, you want to use the whole field for a, a the, big, the big field. The big field. Can you make that happen? When do you need it for them? August 12th. That's going to be a problem. I don't think there's any teams playing. Yeah, nobody's playing. Right nobody's playing in August. We just got to make sure the field's at least dry. So they, <coughs> they, they want to have a baseball tournament. Mrs. Kelly, it's yours. I think it's not a problem. I don't think anybody's using it. August 12th. Just got to check what day is that. It's, it's a Saturday. Just going to have to check on uh, soccer. So soccer is using the field. It's a New Beginnings is a, uh, you want to explain a little bit? It's, it, so not, it's, it's not a barrel. Right? No. So they're going to provide you with insurance and all that stuff. They do. And we already told them that. Okay. They, they used it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. They used it a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay, was that it? Yeah. It won't make sure I don't think the field's being used. I don't think the school doesn't start baseball until the spring time. And then soccer is that's gonna be too early for soccer. So who do we get the okay from? Typically the fields are maintained and, and managed by the RY. Harry Williams is managed by us. So that would right in the, in the field house. Mrs. Cullen, give me the okay right now. So go ahead. I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing going on with soccer. Okay, but the insurance is there's no baseball. There's no baseball going on. They have to name the barrel of the insurance. Okay, what do you need from the certificate of insurance? I'll name the barrel of the one of me was an official. It's just that on the bottom line of the certificate it says it's our own record. It's for at least a million dollars. It's standard. Yes. Because they do have liability. Yeah, so it's just, it's not all the time. They call their agent who issues the, the fitness the that that page that that at the bottom and has little boxes of additional yeah. sources. Right. So it's a to the okay. okay. Anything else? Okay, I'm going to open it to the public. Any wishing to speak, please come to the microphone, state your name and address. Seeing no one, is there a motion to close the public portion? I make a motion to close the public portion. There's a second. Okay. Motion by Ms. Pasco, second by Mr. Ranieri. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public portion is closed. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion by Ms. Pasco, second by Mr. Farrell. All in favor? Aye. Aye.